Just joking, bro, but put it up. Root so strong it'll burn a hole in your backside. Just joking, bro, but put it under the black light. Them turps so strong, that turret comb so long. I don't know what to say, man. Just put it in a fucking bong. Feels like I've been sober for way too long. Matter of fact, it's only about five minutes. Rolling digits, double bitches. Yo, what's good, people? We back. It's talking loud podcast, Grow Bro Show, and today we're doing things a little bit different. But there's one thing that always stays the same, right? And it is that we all want flour that smells strong and tastes superb, tastes friggin' great. And I know I like to say I always want that diesel dog. So today to break it down, we got a few great growers with us in the house. We got a ton of them. What's going on, boys? What's up, brother? Hi. What's good, peeps? Oh man, we got a lot of people in the house. So, uh, let's introduce you guys. First off, we gotta start off with Untrained Astronaut. Shout yourself out, bro. What's good? Hi everybody, this is Untrained Astronaut. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, pretty much any flat or platform. I said platform. Um, <laughs> it's uh, Untrained Astronaut on YouTube, the Untrained Astronaut on TikTok, but it's Untrained Astronaut and everything else. Oh, yeah. And Untrained Astronaut is definitely growing some of that spacely fire, bro. Straight up. And another person who's growing some of that fire is my homie right here. Mike, what's good, bro? What's up, man? This is Mechanibus Luke here. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram. I'm not doing the YouTube. I'm saving that for you guys. You're the pros. Uh, I'm just trying to share the love and share knowledge. And it's been a blast being a part of the opera, this community. Hell yeah, man. And one thing I could definitely say is you're also growing some fire, man. I was looking through your IG and Appreciate great you, work, bro. bro. And my big homie Chris, he's been on the show plenty of time before. What's good, what up, Chris? What up? Hey, y'all know me as Canarado Chris, Canarado underscore Chris on the IG. And we started our new podcast. So it's a S2H uh, podcast with a T on Instagram. And then it's also a Seed to Harvest podcast on YouTube. We do a weekly show 5 30 on saturdays central oh, yeah. time well guys definitely check that out because i was uh i was tuned in when was it was it yesterday man you guys had james loud on was it the day before yesterday? Saturday. saturday yep. yeah bro that was a great show man always doing some great stuff bro Big that up. was freak, freaking huge dude for our seventh show you know that was huge man <laughs> Oh yeah, man! Congratulations, <laughs> man! That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, we got. I got to pay the respect to Rue. He just became uh, James Loud's first product uh, ambassador. So, uh, yeah, big yeah. ups to him, and uh, that's how he came on the show. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Big up, Rue. I think I see Rue in the chat right now. What's good, bro? Everyone in the chat, guys, hit that like, man. We got a great. Uh, I was thinking of a cool word to say. What can we call this? We, other than the Grow Bro Show, I was like, you know, panel just sounds so political and fucking business-like and shit. I was like thinking a blunt. I don't know. It just doesn't even make sense. You know, what can we call it? A podium. The board, man. The cannabis board. board. The cannabis board. The cannabis board. The cannabis board. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> wrong with that. Oh, first stone is coming together when we make it happen, bro. I like that. Sounds good. Hell yeah, man. Well, guys, we got the cannon board. We got a, a great set of goes on the cannon board growing some great fire, guys. Definitely check them all out on IG, on wherever they're at. But I want to talk to today, guys, about, you know, growing that fire. And growing that fire, there are certain things that a lot of people sort of think about when it comes to growing that fire. And for sure, one of the biggest things is smell. You want something that smells so strong. It just kicks your teeth off, kicks your nose off, and makes you feel too, I don't know feel sick but in a good way right and you also want something that tastes great because something could smell really nice and terpy but taste like shit right so how do you how do you guys like really merge that together that's what i sort of want to talk to it today and you guys are all growing in different setups i think so let's just start off in like you know what you guys are growing in like what are you growing in on train national like when it comes to like tents rooms um you go you growing in a tent you go in a room like what size pots like just tell us a little bit about your setup bro uh it's kind of all the above with me uh, i wanted to learn from all angles i guess is the best way to word it so what i did is i had a 12 by 12 grow room built that's my main grow right there i've got five scorpion diablos in there 16 ac infinities i've got two 90 gallon beds 
I've got uh, five of the 15 gallon bags. Then I've got a 10 by 10 grow tent with a similar setup. I've got two 90 gallon beds. I've got two 15 gallon bags. Then I got a five by five with a 15 gallon bag. By the way, there's two scorpions in there. And then there's one scorpion in the five by five. Then I've got a four by four. <clears throat> it's got a 15 gallon bag and it's got a scorpion Diablo 2.0 in there. And then I've got an eight by eight AC infinity. I've got two, two by four gorilla tents. I've got 10, um, four by four grow tents that are, um, I've, got a few i'm just like wait is he being serious right now you got all of these things set up and he's like i thought you I said you were bringing on the there. i got my bringing on the home door. he's not playing bro i love that uh, yeah go look at my channel <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, one thing i did see bro is that you know you got some dope ass camera setups and stuff man and that's nice, the first man. thing i noticed on your ig you know i was like wow he really got and I, when i saw you out in vegas you always got your camera like strapped to you as well so do you go into the girl room and just get a bunch of footage of the girls while they're doing their thing like yeah i do the whole like you know flinging the camera around trying to do the fancy maneuvers and make it look real cool you know visually and uh, a lot of the time I'll record myself growing and doing the the pruning or just popping leaves off or tucking, whatever the case may be, and just do a time lapse over it and give a little bit of narration over the top. Or uh, it could just be I've been doing lives in there lately, and that's been a lot of fun just answering questions for people. Yeah, for but, sure, bro. Uh, like but it's always cool community. just hanging out with the community as well. The community is just a bunch of great growers, just like all of us, just hanging out and talking grow, right? <laughs> yeah. What about you, Luca? Uh, you got like 400 tents as well with like 82 <laughs> lights and stuff? Or I don't know. <laughs> on top of that, that's pretty impressive, untrained. Uh, yeah, no, I got uh, two five by fives with uh, two 60 gallon beds in, and I got a three by three with a 30 gallon in it. And then I got an eight by four for drying and a two by two starter. And I actually just won from the stash blend uh, propagation kit. So I'm pretty stoked about nice. that. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to put it, but that, that's what I got right got. <laughs> <laughs> got to put it somewhere. I right? got to find a place for that, baby. Yeah. Hell yeah. And Chris, what about you? I see you. You got like a real nice, it looks like you're in a studio right now. And I see you got all your foop and everything set up. So tell us a little bit about your setup, bro. Yeah. So if I was to turn the tent camera around, you would see my grow tents in my grow closet. I'm in the grow room, bro. I don't have room in the house right now. So one wall is the studio and the other is the behind the scene grow. But I've got a four by four with Scotty Reels uh, 2.0 grow, uh, grow buckets. Uh, I've got a two by four that we run the foop in. And then we have our experiment closet where we run new stuff once in a while. And then we just had to set up a two by four AC infinity tent for the dry because uh, most flowers got... Uh, we had to harvest two, and there's still two in the tent, so we've got to stagger it out a little bit. Oh, yeah. I got you, bro. And I just want to shout out everyone in the chat right now as well, man. Chat is going pretty crazy. Shout out everyone in the chat showing love. And, guys, definitely go check out all these guys on Instagram. We got Chris. We got. I'm just trying to pull everything up right now. We got Untrained Astronaut. He's over on YouTube. We also got my homie. Growing the fire, bro. I hope YouTube doesn't strike me, so maybe we should take that off. But you guys can see he's growing the fire, bro. No cap at all, bro. And um, one thing I did notice, like, Luke, you're, you're growing some fire, and you're growing in, like, um, what I thought were, like, some really big fabric pots, like, massive fabric pots. Tell us a little bit about those, bro, because that's the decision you got to make when you're first starting off, right? Am I going to grow in fabric pots, plastic pots, small pots, big pots? How am I going to do it? Yeah, no, I uh, I got the grassroots fabric pots, the three by three beds, and it's been great. The larger body of soil is what I've just heard all through organics, the bigger battery, the better buffer. So it's been great for me to run the, <laughs> I run the take and bake from build a soil in both of my uh, 60 gallons. And it's been water only for the most part. I do some uh, ferments and some kashi on the side. But other than that, um, I just water only do some soil tests and she's off to the races. Hell yeah, bro. I love that. Water only is my jam. I hate mixing nutrients. Any of you guys hate mixing nutrients as much as I do? Or... Oh, man. Not my <laughs> thing. Not my thing. <laughs> that pretty much probably led me to, like, you know, just get into, like, some of these stuff. I was telling you guys just about, about the I, I can Flower Power, the I can Veg Pack. And this is a slow-release organic fertilizer. And the biggest thing that I like about that and pretty much any other slow-release fertilizer is that you can just water pretty much when the soil is dry. If it's synthetic fertilizer, slow-release, you don't have to worry as much about water watering as often. Soil can dry out a little bit more. But if it's organic, you want to at least keep it moist so those microbes can, like, 
build up a really nice microclimate. And what I noticed is that you got like a bunch of top dress and stuff going on, man. Like, tell us a little bit about that. Like, uh, not top dress. Uh, what's it called? Cover crop. Cover crop. And that helps keep that moisture in. So I'm sure you're running organics, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I like to run the pretty heavy straw line on top and I'll run the 12 seed cover crop. It's got flax and clover, a bunch of little different plants in there. And it does, it helps retain the moisture. I can get away with maybe not watering for a day, just lift up the top, see if I got moisture. If the worms are up top, I know it's pretty happy and probably pretty moist below. Yeah, I got you, man. So like, do you just pop like four of them in that massive pot how big is that pot bro like four is it like a four by four like i don't know i'm just guessing three by yeah it's three foot by three foot yeah no oh. i've been doing four in there but i've been watching the northern scrogger and i'm thinking about putting one in there and see what i can do um, <laughs> i got the three by three bed right now in the 30 gallon i'm gonna stretch that out just one plant so it's yeah. uh it's pretty cool just to see how big they can grow in these organic beds and the forgiveness that they give you sometimes Cause I travel for work. So my wife does a lot of the watering during the week and to ask her to, to mix this and mix that, it just wasn't doable. So we switched the organics and it's been game changer. It's, it's awesome. necessity. Yeah. Necessity. But it makes sense though. Cause like, bro, like you, if I was asking anyone, it doesn't even have to be my wife. It could be anyone to mix nutrients in the synthetic shit that could burn my shit any moment. I would be a little bit concerned when I head out on vacation, bro. Definitely oh man what about you chris like you you running organics as well you running uh synthetics you mixing the two synganics what, what are you doing so i've got uh grow dots in uh scotty's bucket and i use recharge so that's why i consider myself synganic you know gotcha. with that side of it and if i need somebody to water for me if i'm gone for a week they walk over to the reservoir fill it up to the brim and close it and walk out the door i've yeah. gone a week without opening the window of my tent just because I wasn't able to. Um, sometimes they go out of control and you open the door and you have a jungle and have to lop that stuff back. But uh, I don't have to worry about nutrients. Yeah. And then in the other tents, yeah, it's hands-on. We mix uh, poop uh, and that's uh, organic. So I think that in the other tent, we can call it organics. So a little bit of both. I, I got you. I kind of so says, look how handsome my boy Chris looks, but shout out to El kind of so in the chat, bro. <laughs> guys, definitely check out what they got going on. What's and, up, um, guys? <laughs> what about you, Untrained? Like, you, I haven't, like, I don't even know, like, if you're running organics or synthetics or if you're mixing the two. Like, I just know you're growing some great flowers, bro. When I saw you actually post something on IG recently, and I was like, man, he's getting close to harvest, and this looks so friggin' good, bro. Shit. <laughs> I'm in the uh, I'm doing organic and it's the build a soil way. I'm using the 3.0 soil. I'm just top dressing, you know, just using build a soil top dress, using uh, some biochar, a little bit of that, some worm castings, all that fun stuff. You know, I don't get too deep into it, but you get the general gist of it. I've got quite a bit of soil and I absolutely love it. I'm a lazy person. And so being able to just top dress like once a month or once a month if need be or maybe like you know sometimes i do like two to three week spans instead but uh it's pretty easy man that's the 10 by 10 grow tent right there and so that's chill out og on the right and that was the uh what the fuck donut triple is on the left that's my sour tropicana cherry in the four by four um the next one that you're gonna see is tropicana punch in the five by five and then once he goes to the main grow room that was nuts. Oh, that one's in flower now. It's fucking Sweet. crazy right now. Oh, that's flower video. Okay. And that's basically like a week ago or something, bro. So like yeah. you got a lot of great stuff going on. And one thing I also noticed is this oh, little yeah. uh, single scrog frame thingy. Like I got that at like some hardware or something. And people always ask me about that. Like, is it good for training? Does it work? Um, what do you think about those? You use that for training? Okay. I love it for the beginning stages of training. It gives you just a really quick, easy, lazy way of just saying, hey, fuck it, to go down. And not only that, but you could set the height on it. And so that's your lower form of it. And then you yeah. could just go from there with the upper trellising and just kind of really have a good head start. As you can see there, the stock got huge. Uh, they're not constricted by any means. They've got plenty of room to get through there. And it was, you know, easy as hell to lollipop and get a thick stock. So it, oh, it was yeah. able to help all that with that cage i love that thing dude it's awesome you love that girth right and then, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh man but so we put it you put a second net right above that one that and uh he didn't show the mangrove but what i did was uh in the mangrove i took tomato cages over that 
And so basically they've got an inner trellis and then the tomato cages give it like an outward structural support essentially to give them that lineage they need. And I'll, I'll tend to take yo-yos, right? And I'll put them along the sides to give it the extra like support or anything like that. Um, so that way it helps out. But down there, you guys were able to see in the five by five, I simply just took trellising and I take zip ties. I'll pull that shit as tight as I can against the, uh, the tent. Like, you know what I mean? The little pipes going up, just zip tied to that shit and you're good to go. You know? So you got two layers of trellising in there with absolute ease, minimal effort, lollipop that shit. And it goes right in order. Yeah, so, bro. I think I actually seen one of your, uh, scrubs the recipe. Now, like massive wall to wall. Oh. Like that's beautiful, bro. Then who's this? This is uh, my homie Luke. Yes, oh, he's yeah. also doing some great stuff. We we're just talking about the scrub, so I just, I, I, I guess I got a little bit ahead of myself. No, but... you're good. I just didn't. I can't see it so far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Like you you got a, a great little scrub setup going on. So when it comes to like you know actually pulling superb flower, getting some really nice yields, taste, and all that, a lot of people talk about terps taste, but you want to like also maximize your yields, right? So is scrubbing something that all you guys do, like, or you guys do other types of training too? I'm scrog all the way. It's, I've been scrogging everything. Scrog gang, bro. I like that. I got another <laughs> way too, but that fucking, uh, them tomato cages are cheat codes, man. They you guys are, ever bro. fuck with them? I fuck with them heavily, bro. Bro, I was buying that shit since I was living out in the Caribbean, bro. And yeah, I had buddy, to pay, like almost 15 bucks for one of them, bro. And I would like, I walk out the fucking store with like 20 of them. One for each <laughs> pack, bro. Like, <laughs> fuck yeah, we ain't playing. <laughs> Man, I did the same. I bought all those, and then that you know those gator clips. Have you guys seen those? Nah, what are those gator clips? They're for the. Uh, they're kind of like the the pipe, and you can kind of put rungs along it, and uh, you can get them at Home Depot and such. But the gator clips allow you to just clamp these things together, and you can make any type of like. I don't know, it's like a kid's toy. You remember those magnets that were sticks and shit that you could just kind of link together? Yeah, it's kind of like that, but with plastic and your garden. You know what I mean? Cool. But then again, I bought multiple of those so that I could try all the different methods and allow my viewers to see every type and style of doing it. Uh, I bought all the different types of like tomato cages, all those weird trellising things. And then in the main grow, I've got two beds connected with, uh, I think it's five layers of trellising through that one. And I did the, uh, the three by three, like square on the top. So they have their own like box at the top too, but yeah. I'm trying all the different ones. So I'm excited wow. to hear all your guys' different ways too. That's Cause cool more ways for me to try you know what i mean yeah i'm really so looking at what you got bro. going on you got like you know multiple scrog levels and all types of stuff going on bro i think that's dope like Just personally like i i'm not a huge fan of the stationariness of scrogging that's why I like those single scrog frames really appeal to me so like, i can move like the single plants and shit like that but you just can't beat a good old scrog man so you know tent wall to wall filled with flowers it's you just can't beat it bro that last one that you've seen on that cart, that's a fucking cart. From, I got from a pallet. It's like a it's like a goddamn clothing rack cart on the far right. You're about to see it. I oh, see yeah, it. I see it. <laughs> it's on wheels. Everything in there is on wheels. Except oh, for the on, that. Under, yeah. under that, on the left, there's a wood thing that I built that has wheels. You're about to see it. You see it sitting on top of it? Yeah. I can pull that out. Uh, I uh, love this guy said it, bro. Yeah, Talk dude. about like... You know, in genius. he's got a weed wagon, bro. There's, there's That's a generator <laughs> underneath of there. That if it goes down, if I lose power, it remote start kicks on, so I don't have to do anything. Like, oh, oh fuck, man, I love it. That's too legit to quit, bro. Like, um, I got a great question from Stone. How much is that power bill untrained? Twelve hundred. <laughs> Twelve hundred. <laughs> shit. Oh man. I mean, it's actually gone down. I got the two hundred amp service. Okay. But okay. Yeah. But shit, bro. That's that's legit. Shout out Blue in the chat too. Crazy. What up, serious. Blue? Was what Gucci? up, Scotty? Chad Westport. Hell yeah, everyone in the chat, man. Uh, chat is actually going crazy. I haven't tapped in the chat in a bit. Please forgive me, guys. I'm trying to pull all this stuff up and stuff like that. But guys, hit that like if you got over 200 people watching or only 100 some likes. You got to fix that. Hit that like and show some love. We're showing plants. We're doing all the type of stuff that you guys like and YouTube hates. So. Show some love, bro. Um, now, I do want to ask you guys, like, a big fucking debate, bro, is, like, terps, THC percentage, what's the, what, what, what what's more important? Like, what do you guys look for? Do you guys prefer one over the other, prefer one over the other? Or do you guys, what do you guys say? Let's start off with uh, you, Chris. What you saying? Terps, THC, do you look for a mix? Weed's got to taste good, man. So it, the terps and stuff are important. Yeah, it's smell and taste for me. Um, 
we've all debunked the uh, THC level because our favorite plant has that entourage effect that pharmaceuticals can't uh, replicate. So that's one thing. That's a major thing that we have going for us. Yeah. So um, that the terps and stuff are very, very important for me. And uh, there's definitely wicked ways to get it done. And then there's really easy ways to get it done. But uh, don't steal my terps. Don't, don't. And uh, what about you, Luke? What do, what, what do you think? Um, terps, taste, or you go for that THC percentage, or it's got to have both? Because personally, when I grow my flower, I don't ever really test my homegrown, you know? What do you think? Yeah, no, I got to go with Chris on this one. I'm definitely a terp and flavor guy. You know, I'm a big gas guy, not too much into the fruit. So if it's got gas and fire, that's me. I, I love it. That skunkiness. It's got to be diesel, dog. Uh, it's got to be diesel, dog. <laughs> you know it, bro. And I know my homie, Andre National, was smoking some of that diesel, dog, with me out in Vegas, bro. So what you say? You're looking for that THC percentage or you didn't really worry about that shit? I'm all about THC percentage. Ooh. I mean, terps are great, but I'm here to get fucked up. Like, <laughs> I mean, I wake up and I smoke blunts. I smoke at least 10 a day. Dude, I smoke about like six grand worth of weed a month. Like, shit. Like, I like it. Like, it helps me. You know what I mean? I was actually breaking it down just last night with my wife. I, I was sitting down like on the TV and I was watching some show, bro. When someone was like, they smoke a pack a day. And they said it like real quick. I said, pack a day. This is just regular cigs, right? And I was like, transferring that to like how much flour I would smoke, like how many J's I would smoke a day. And I think I, I smoke maybe like four or five, you know, some days it may go up, but like how many J's do you guys think you consume on a day? Oh, fuck. On I'm Saturday, four, dude, five guy. Saturdays, man, outside of the show, probably seven, eight throughout the day or something like that. But during the week, it's usually one in the evening after my day job. Yeah. Cause that day, during that day job, you gotta like make sure to get that shit in too. And during the week, like you just always got shit going on. The weekend, you can unlax and rewind, right? <laughs> Some of us can, right? <laughs> true, true. I got a fucking leaf blower in front of me just in case I can't get high enough. <laughs> hey, this thing is dope. Like I love this thing. Have you ever seen it? Uh, is he gonna do that live? No, of course. Please tell me you're gonna do that live. Oh, it's it's not even a question. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I put about an ounce in here at a time or more sometimes. It's just whatever you feel. Bro, yeah. I literally saw a dude. <laughs> in the I was like, what is he doing, bro? <laughs> Blow it up in the chat. Come on, man, astronaut, blow it up. Oh, yeah, I keep out of this together. world. <laughs> Get that. Yeah, Get that. It, seriously, I got, we got plenty we can go with here. Oh, oh, rip God. it, rip it, rip it. I'm over here. I can't really hear you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this guys yeah, smash that like for untrained, bro. This is crazy, bro. So wait, let me get this straight. You actually put weed in that and burn oh it up. God, I can't wait to blow this to Chad Westport's face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shout out Minnesota. He says, "Holy fuck, that's right." I call this blessing, people. Every month, my live is called Church with Astro. <laughs> that is dope. Here. I gotta hop on those lives a little bit more, bro. I did not know that that's what be going on over there. On the that's line, what we bro. do there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need one of those. <laughs> you still have uh, a problem. <laughs> that's great. Shout out, man. man. Okay. Uh, that was. They good, needed man. that at Hash Bash Saturday. They had a parachute that they had a bunch of people hot box, and that would have been perfect. Another. Uh, hey, did I see in the uh, chat it said astronaut for president? I think uh, Westport said that. Oh, <laughs> Shout out, Man, Chad, it would bro. Be a hell of a fun year. Sure, I can tell you that for sure, bro. I know we're going to get federal legalization. I can tell you that much. <laughs> oh, dude, it's going to be so fun, though, for an entire year until the world goes to shit. You know what I mean? Because keywords until the world goes to shit. Yeah. <laughs> until be in the president's <laughs> office hitting that fucking big ass leaf blower. <laughs> exactly, dude. Like, fuck, man. Everybody could keep growing weed all over the streets. It would be so fucking fun. Like, oh, oh, bro. My God. 
I love that, man. Slayer420 in the chat, shout out, says, I need a blessing. But, bro, we're actually talking about today, guys, you know, the secrets to growing that organic growing flower that smells strong, tastes superb. And if you guys want some flowers, some great genetics, definitely join up with the I Can VIP Bean Club because genetics are going out to all VIPs. we got a few packs of that Bonafi pie head left, and it smells so good. You can smell it in bed. You can smell it through your J. It just smells amazing. Chris is about to pop some. And I think that that's definitely something you guys need to pay attention to when you're looking to grow some fire some superb flower that tastes good just choosing the right genetics it doesn't have to be i can anything but just choose the right genetics right um i've got bag seeds that were fire but i've also grown bag seeds that were complete trash i've spent tons of money on genetics that are also complete trash so what do you guys say how important is genetics when it comes to growing something that smells and tastes great so it doesn't matter how great a grower you are if you have uh boo-boo genetics you're not going to get anywhere um stay away from white label uh do not just pick up the first thing that you google and definitely uh look on youtube see what other people are growing don't just say how do i grow cannabis and where do i get seeds because yeah. it'll be who pays for it and it's those white banks that are just throwing anything in a bag saying here you go yeah, um you know has anyone grown northern lights and it not be northern lights that's you white need, label. You look like Northern Frights, bro. Because that <laughs> shit looks scary. <Yeah. laughs> what about you, Luke? You're like, you think genetics plays a big part? Because I see you growing some absolute fire, bro. Like, so do you look for certain genetics, certain strains? Have you grown some that just weren't that great, even though you apply your usual techniques to it? Um, yeah, as far as the grow, it grew fine. Yeah, it's not sometimes it's not my favorite smoke. Um, but that's what I think is so awesome about this community is. If you're involved and you work with everyone and talk to everyone, you're going to find the fire genetics. It's out there. Um, you don't need the big dispensary or the big shops or anything like that. I've found most of it through working with you guys on, you know, Instagram, just seeing people grow and everyone shouting out the fire. It's, it's a lot easier. I think once you get involved in the community to find the good genetics. Yeah, that's a good point. And sometimes well people just like, you know, send stuff out to you, welcoming to hook you up, want you to try new stuff. And I've found a lot of the times, bro, like the most unassuming genetics or the most unassuming pack is actually what I got the most fire from. Like I was on a on the DG show, show show recently and like I love ethos. I grew a bunch of ethos. Colin from ethos was on there. And some people in the chat were saying like, you know, some of the strains that he has are real fire. Some of them are real gas. And I have grown some fire from ethos, but I've also grown some strains from ethos that just look pretty and just aren't as tasty. Just don't fit my taste profile. Now, would I say it's shit or it's trash? No, because it definitely looks great and tastes great and smells great. But everyone looks for something unique, right? So what about you, Untrained? What do you think about when it comes to genetics? Do you, like, look for certain strains? Or are there certain things that you really look for? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's funny you brought that up. Yeah, I noticed a lot of people were in the chat saying so many bad things about Ethos. And I just held true because the one thing that I do know from Ethos is... Now, I've only ran one of their plants, and it was a White Wedding. If you guys haven't tried it, it is a I must. I do that one. Huge fan. Huge fan. So uh, with that being said, I agree with everything the guy in the orange below me said. It is awesome. Uh, definitely, it's all about the genetics. You're always going to want to get the genetics. Um, sorry, I'm really, really bad with names. <laughs> and I'm new to YouTube, so I haven't met anybody yet. Don't hate me. <laughs> no, no, no. Welcome, welcome. But yeah, he's right. I like what he said a lot. Uh, watch out for that white tag stuff. He is 100%. Yeah, bro. And I actually went out to, we were out actually at fucking MJ Biz and bro, white label people doing white label shit is just so out there now. They really just don't give a fuck. They're like booths set up and there's this Asian guy standing behind one of the booths and he had like cookies packaging, everything packaging, like Skittles, backpack boys, every type of packaging behind you. And he's like, whatever packaging you want, you can get. Like, you can get any type of packaging and put something in it and call it anything, you know? And white label is just, you just may not always know what you're getting, right? So, it's crazy to think these about right, These what? right here, if you want, you could do a giveaway on them or something. I've got a ton of Kindway Farms. They've been winning all sorts of shit, too. True. Okay. Well, yeah. They sent me, <laughs> oh, my God. They sent me. I mean, in U.S. only, but yeah, if you guys want to, you're more than welcome. I've got literally like, she had to have given me like a thousand seeds. Like, she gave oh my goodness. All sword. like I've got all these and she, <laughs> yo, when I met her, I was recording this shit, right? 
she actually fucking won and we had to stop recording because she won first place with the love whip. Yeah. Like it was bad shit. Like I've got and I've got love whip right here. And that was at uh Mo Canna Fest seven. So Okay, so, I got yeah, you. dude, she's awesome. She's from around here too, so uh Kansas City, Missouri area. So but if you guys right. want to get in on that, hit that like. I'll show some love. And, and uh yeah. Maybe we can get some going, bro. But like oh, we were also talking earlier about you no know, applying the right amount of stress because you know, sometimes a lot of people try all sorts of techniques during flower, even during veg, but more so during flower, sometimes to get a advanced trichome production and all kind of stuff like that you guys do any crazy stress methods to improve smell or taste or anything like that bro stop it <laughs> <laughs> you stop that shit, man. just come on uh, i mean what do you guys think i mean does any of that bro science stuff work I'll let you guys. I don't know it. about deep latent flower. I think what's done is done. I don't think you're going to make any drastic changes, you know, week four, week five of flower to get huge resin production or extra funk. Yeah. So I do have to say that per Rasta Jeff, the 18, adding 18, six, the last 10 to 14 days of uh, your flower. I mean, it does, it does work. Um, third place at the DGC cup. I mean, we'll speak to it. I mean, there were trikes that, Matt tried it, you know, like twice. So uh, I, it worked out. One more time. Definitely. So the last uh, 10 to 14 days of uh, your light cycle on flower, flip it back to 18, 18, six. Bro, but it, uh, you should do it on something that you've grown before. So, you know, when it finishes, uh, I, t I trusted uh, JR token. He was like, Hey, it's a 10 week finisher. And I just counted back 10 days and I changed my light. And I did see, you know, compared to some of the other people. Yo, that's a great idea for my viewers to be able to see if it works really, really well or not. Because I got a lot of familiar strains in there, so we can compare. Thank you. Yeah. I'll try that I mean, out. that's a great A and B test. I haven't heard it. I'm down. Yeah, I haven't specifically, like, tried tried that, I don't think. But I have done, like, weird-ass shit, you know, like, just take the plants out of the tent, you know, and just leave it in a dark room and, you know, just don't think about it for a while, like that 48 hours before out of the chop. But I haven't actually gone back to 18. That seems pretty wild. Yeah. I, I, was, I was scared, and you should listen to all the haters. And just like we all have to say, you try it. If it works, it works. But, I mean, I'm not here to blow gas other than this way. You know what I mean? I so I would to recommend you. something that I haven't tried myself. Yeah, I got you. Unless you're blue, you're not blowing gas unless we're blowing the leaf blower, right? Yeah, <laughs> My man. Uh, Mr. Austin says you need a DIY video for that leaf blower, bro. <laughs> yeah, duct tape. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> First <laughs> off, you need the leaf blower. <laughs> leaf blower. Second is the reducer, depending yeah, on how big your bowl is. <laughs> Yo, this was like, that was goddamn for my uh charcoal filter systems you guys know a little six inch connector piece i just ripped the back off of this like you take your hand and you just pull it off and then oh, you shit, shove I this just in noticed there. what it is yeah bro like i don't fuck around it works great man i got a couple <laughs> and i choose this one over the other one and then i took this from the other one because it was easier but yeah it's got a glass bowl in here and shit yeah the other one we called it the space laser it worked really really well for like Two episodes, but we like using it, so it melted. Yeah, he was Man. overworking that bitch. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> holy shit! Uh, uh, I like weed. Weed's good. I like that. Oh, uh, so the, I mean, the dark. I, either way, you know, it all depends on. I mean, I haven't seen a. Di I mean, big difference or anything like that. Also, when are you, when do you cut your plants, uh, day or night? I mean, I want to get in there as soon as possible, you know, for that day. So I'll hack them down, you know, I don't wait for the lights to come on. Yeah, for sure. And like drying and curing is also a big part of it, guys. And I know I'm seeing that in the chat. We'll get onto that in a bit. Um, I actually did a video on drying and curing, but you know, there are a lot of stuff that you can mess up on before you even get to that dry and cure stage. So I think I would mention like some of you guys, all you guys, I think actually are growing in some sort of organic or at least organic system. And a lot of people say you get the best taste out of organics, the best flavor from organics. Um, have you guys like done any comparisons and say, okay, I grew in like, a bunch of synthetics. I grew a bunch of organics and one tasted better than the other. I love this topic. 
Uh, I can't really say I've did one synthetic grow and I switched to organics immediately and it's been fire and all of our homegrown always is. So it's, it's hard to say for me. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Don't go, go fix it. <laughs> I got you. And Unchained says you love this topic. So go crazy, bro. Tell me what's good. Jesus, everything. Like I'm a <laughs> huge fan of Jeremy Silva. That's my fucking guy. He is not my guy because I don't know him. I want to know him, but he's the guy that I used to watch religiously. Yeah. Dude's so fucking smart. It hurts, but it's amazing. So it really is. But like his method of like 60, 60, you know, or as close to it as you can get in the dark environment. And that's why I bought the eight by eight AC infinity. And I run it with the uh, T69 Pro Plus, or no, just the Pro Controller in that one. But I use uh, an AC unit in there. It's a uh, portable uh, one. What do you call it? A portable AC unit. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. And then I use a dehumidifier, a humidifier. You know, I've got it going on in there, man. So I love it. It gives the best results. And I've never tried it any other way. So I don't know nothing but success on that part. My dad had taught me a lot of this shit off the rip. You know, I was lucky on that part. So... I got you. So you actually like had some experience growing with your dad? Not quite. Um, I grew up with my dad like growing weed and shit like that when it was hella illegal. Yeah. And so he, you know, those like tornado storm shellers they used to put under houses. And there's like yeah, all yeah. dirt down there and shit. Like that's what I remember him growing weed in is the floor there. Like literally, I'm yeah. not even talking with you. Like walking yeah. around on that. And so he was growing AK-47 in the closets everywhere and shit. You know, like. It was dope as fuck. Like, everybody bought my dad's weed. I even took it, and I didn't like it. It was too strong. I didn't know what the fuck was going on, man. <laughs> I was after that, bro. He had some good shit, apparently. <laughs> That's crazy, bro. So he was growing some tasty-ass shit even back then, too? Not a clue if it was tasty. I was smoking out of a pop can, but it was hitting like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> this dude never fails to let me down, bro. I love it, bro. bro. I thought I was blind. I don't even know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> it was awesome. Like, <laughs> that's dope, though. That's fucking dope. It's crazy. But um, we were talking about like you know the organics just tasting better than synthetics. You know that's up for debate still. But one thing that's not up for debate is that you know organics is pretty easy to do sometimes and some people favor it a lot of people in the chat i'm thinking right now if i ran a poll let's say they're growing organics so i think you mentioned uh you know luke you are running in an organic massive living soil bed or uh, with the grassroots fabric pots do you have like a super soil mix you run because a lot of people have like custom super soil mixes and stuff like that you, or you how do you do it uh yeah i i got the take and bake from build a soil i'm with untrained that dude's a genius he he's got it down point um, it's just a one-to-one-to-one uh, -to -one -to -one ratio, your base, your compost, and your aeration. It's got biochar inoculated with root-wise, worm castings. Um, it's got a bunch of good stuff in there. So I I started with the most balanced recipe because that's what I've been taught by Jeremy. And so started with the best stuff, and hopefully it lasts me for a long, long time. Oh, yeah. Well, that's great, bro, because, like, one thing that a lot of people do, do you have, find any issues, like, dialing in, you know, any – deficiencies or anything like that if you have to do you go to liquids or anything like what do you do uh so far so good i'm only in my second cycle on both my beds and i've just been doing ferments i did uh the build a sort of way uh, re-amend after my first run which is just some basic ingredients and uh no it's been water only and ferments and i've had many deficiencies at all so I'm getting my first soil test i'm gonna do a uh consult with zach branson over at build the soil so i'm interested to get the rundown on how uh those tests work and because i've i've read about them googled them and they're beyond me so i'm excited to learn more about the uh reamend yeah that is actually pretty cool and like i'm seeing you have this massive plant right here um and this is actually one that you grew or is it one that that's my that's my boy he's um yeah, he I came to michigan with Jesus me Canada makes matt creation so he's doing the same thing build the soil he's the been my partner through all this. We kind of bounce ideas off each other and kind of help each other trim bros and training bros. So it's been you. awesome having to grow me. Grow bros. Grow bros. Grow bros. Right. <laughs> That's tight. We got the, the can of boardroom, right? The can, can of board. Room. Can the of board. can of board. Can of board. Rocking That's it. Out the room, Matt. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> my bad. <laughs> What's oh, the fucking bro. language? I know, bro. <laughs> we might get age gated. Come on, bro. We're already going to get age gated, bro. I showed so many plans for this damn show. Already. I'm surprised they ain't age gated already, bro. <laughs> oh, That's a beautiful plant. It is, bro. Definitely. And he yeah, got he did a lot a great of other job. beautiful ones 
too, bro. Like, I think you guys are growing some great stuff, bro. All you guys, like, straight up. And that's why I thought you guys would be the perfect people to talk about, like, you know, how to grow some of that fire. So do you guys drop temps at night or anything like that? Because I've seen some people yeah. actually talking about dropping temps at the night. Helps to bring out not only the colors, but the turps, the smells and all that. And I've found that since I've moved to, like, a cooler climate area, I've just find my house just smells all the fucking time. All the time. I love this topic, too. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Uh, Mo uh, put an air cleaner at the top of the stairs so that when you come into, because on the landing, you can get that first whiff. I mean, I'm pretty nose blind to it, but when I walk in the house after work, it's like, bam, there you are. And I've got carpet, I've got carpet filters running all the time everywhere. And yeah. it, some of it, it's just dank, man. The dank is good, though, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Like I love nothing better than waking up in the morning, bro. I know I have not smoked anything. I just get out of freaking bed and I walk into the bathroom and I just smell some shit coming through the vents and everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's good. I like that. <laughs> but you do know that if anyone comes over, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Way to live right there, man. But dude, yeah, I love that one. I do. I even do the sunrise sunset. But back to that, it was uh, the daytime temperature. Yeah. Uh, it's set to 74, but it is the lights are now at a, like 80%. So with five of the scorpions and the UVs, it's fucking hot. You know what I do? So at nighttime, it gets down to 65. But also, say my troll master does that for me automatically. And then at nighttime, the humidity drops down to 48. And it's at 66 during the day. And then uh, the CO2, the generator turns off at that point, And yeah. Wow, I love it. I think it helps a lot. Then the sunrise and sunset, 15 minutes up, 15 minutes down. It's They say it doesn't really like do anything. I like doing it, but if anybody's trying it themselves, that's what you're supposed to do it under. You seem to be like pretty specific with your temps and RHs, bro. Like, is that oh, something yeah. that you've just taken time to dial in? I see Mo B says experiment with all the plants. Is oh, that yeah. something that you do like to get to that perfect stage? I am so like... I'm OCD and so I'm a perfectionist and I believe I can always improve and I will not stop learning and I will not stop improving until I have got it down entirely and I am an addictive person. So I've only been growing for three years. I've only been YouTubing for nine months or something like that. And uh, it's because of that like addictive, like aggressive, like I have to do better. And with this dude, you know, it's um, how to explain I kind of forgot what I was talking about. Where <laughs> it's was not it? fucking leaf blower, bro. It does happen. Where was it? <laughs> Damn it. Isn't that the worst? <laughs> it's the leaf blower, worst. Bro. That means your medicine's working though, oh. right? I remember now. <laughs> God damn. No, yeah. Once you hit a certain point, like, all right, I could do better than last grow. You know what I mean? Everybody's got that. I could do better than I did last grow. Well, with me, my first grow was eight pounds of the best shit I've ever smoked in my life. My second grow, I got five pounds off of one plant and then like three or four off of like the other section. So it was just like, I don't know, like I didn't bother weighing the rest at that point. You know what I mean? True. And so I just wanted to improve the quality, the more density and actually spread them better, learn to trellis better. So I get better overall nugs, no more larf. And so now I'm doing the whole lollipopping, all that fun shit. It's just perfecting i have to perfect so i'm going to keep improving so i do it like a, a race car i've got the race car room i mean the motherfucker is 50k plus in cash on that motherfucker already and so what i'm saying is it's I'm, if i'm pushing at that level what can i do to improve well i can actually utilize each effect that i implemented into it and i can really just start driving it like that race car hitting the gas pedal start stressing them a little bit further feeding them the exact amount they need uh running the dli start you know running the integral fucking watching the VPDs continuously, strategically trying all these different charts or charts. I have cotton mouth, but you guys get it. Nah, bro. But like you actually raised a few good points there as well. Cause like I did a video on DLI recently and for a simple guy like me and a lot of people out here who probably been growing for a long time, DLI, VPD, what the fuck? It's like WTF. Like there's so many new acronyms. Like can't the plant just grow with water anymore? <laughs> like whatever happened to that, you know? So but you're right, because like when you once you dial in some of these things, you're like, OK, like I looked at DLI and I was like, OK, I don't need to have my plants being blasted uh, all the time at 80 percent. You know, I can change it. I can adjust it throughout the plants entire life cycle, you know, and that may sound obvious, but a lot of people have their plants you know, under 80, 80 percent, maybe 60 percent, 70, whatever the case is, maybe 100 percent for the entire life of the plant's flower. But there's actually a chart that you guys can see and it shows you like, 
you know, it, it moves like a fucking snake almost, like, and different levels will save you just a little bit of cash too. So there are a lot of benefits to it, right? Not only that, but your light, if you look it up on the website, it should have a DLI chart for you. So pretty interesting. I did not actually even know that. I should check that out. Hmm. It's pretty neat. It's a uh, yeah, and I think that's awesome on train that you you know you're always trying to get better. I think that's what makes all a good grower. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the sunrise and the sunset, you know, that's all part of the natural have, organics. You know, I, I think got that's birds awesome. Chirping in my room, like that's amazing. It's so stupid in there. I'm trying to be above and beyond. I've got 16 AC Infinity lights with the five scorpions on top, but UV bars on four of them. So it's like 10 times more than you would need. <laughs> I mean, it's like I have to wear glasses in there. I've got big fucking eyes. It's weird to some people. And man, if I don't wear glasses, I swear you could sunburn these dumb fucks. Like, <laughs> I, I just blinding, blinding. My pupils hurt. So, you know what I mean? It's yeah. stupid in there. I love it though, man. You got a real, real serious setup, bro. I got to say dude, that. The dude. Eclipse was a walk in the park today. Let's say that. Like, <laughs> yeah, you guys actually take anyone, any, any one of you guys like smoke up, roll some homegrown, go outside, smoke that up and I don't know, like, see the Eclipse. And if you guys get total darkness. Yeah. No, no, not on the darkness scale. No, not total darkness. No. Right, now cool. the my buddy's kids had some glasses, so we got to peek at it and it was pretty interesting, but no total darkness. Yeah, me either. Kind of disappointing, right? I had a hundred thousand. Uh, what was it? I think I don't know what it was called. A CU, but like it's a tinted lens on my camera, and so I was out there. I recorded the whole uh whole thing of it going over. That's I dope, bro. Like I'm a time lapse of that shit with like a lens on and shit with that. Yeah, dope. I my, did it. My I did it. Telling me like if you put your camera up to it without the lens, like it'll break your camera phone or some shit like that. Well, I didn't know that. I don't know. I'm That'd not, be I'm fun. Not smoking weed, I don't know. <laughs> like your answer in a lot. Of <laughs> like, not just one. Let me tell you. Yeah, no, I was recording with my phone. Like, god damn, it ain't working. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's still here. It's go. I didn't check it after, but well, at least it didn't break. But I, uh, another thing that a lot of people say they do to increase like smell, taste, and just get better quality flowers use UV light and untrained. You mentioned just now, you know, you got. A bunch of lights set up. You even got some UV lights set up in between that. And Bud Prowler in the chat says UV and far red play has shown good results as well. So have you noticed any good results by incorporating UV? <laughs> logo? Yes. <laughs> Fuck that yeah. That answer that quickly as hell, it bro. Is, Shit. Dude, <laughs> Christ, man. It's bold. Like behind me, Fuck. just to make it easy, promo code Astro15 <laughs> is – no, it's Astronaut15 for HLG 15% off. Uh, for Niwa, by the way, is Astro 15. We were talking about build a soil earlier. If you go to the build a soil website and then you're getting anything ecoit related, I seen that he had an ecoit transmitter in there. Uh, the promo code is going to be untrained astronaut 31415. And so that covers those. But yeah, 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 yeah. Just had to throw this out there. Those are the UVs definitely. No, 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 oh, shit. The UV. Like fucking... My bad. I'm high. Um, <laughs> all right. So UVs, like a benefit, right? Yes. They're insanely, insanely helpful. I noticed immediately the difference because I started the 4x4 grow tent specifically to learn how to grow without the luxury. Since I built that fucking grow room like that, yeah. I needed to learn from the bottom. I'm that type of person. Without a proper foundation, you have nothing. I'm not an illusionary person. I'm here to make the fucking difference. You know what I mean? So I built from ground up. I've got one tent that I did with simple, basic items. I had a uh, bathroom exhaust exhaust fan. I hooked that into a uh, fucking pour, a plug. I had the HLG 100 watt, uh, the 100 R in there. It kept the tent perfectly. I started learning all those and I started trying the different sizes, different tents, different lights. And I noticed in each one, nothing compared to the uv alone like it was just insanity the difference that i've noticed but with hlgs you don't have to learn about shit you just plug them in your light and you're good yeah you, you just run with them yep so you don't have to implement time schedules or anything interesting what about you guys look uh you guys running any uv ir lights chris i you luke yeah, I got a UVIR. I'm not sure. I'm just starting with it. Uh, I have noticed that the girls pray an awful more than any other 10. I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but I'm still playing with the idea. I've been just going, you know, half an hour in veg and slowly in flower, get up to about an hour a day. I'm not sure. I, I got a lot to learn about that stuff, but I do notice praying. The girls are happy. That's good, bro. I love to see praying ladies. And I actually did a video on UV and IR recently. And 
the amount of people that drop comments and said like, yo, I'm running UVIR right now. I've noticed a huge difference. Yo, I'm doing this right now. And I was like, damn, I didn't even notice that that many people actually running UVIR in their setup. So it's definitely worth a try if you haven't, you know, tried it. We've got two growers on right now that sort of, you know, have good results with it. One swears by it and one is, you know, having good results with it. So oh, maybe it's something worth trying. I don't think it can hurt. That's for sure. Hell yeah. I don't Yo, think I so. forgot. Can of cans in the chat. I forgot promo code. Shout Astro. out can of can. Yeah. Astro can can. promo code to get awesome. 15% off a of can of can. Hell yeah. Big ups to can of can. And cool, um, we were talking about lights, bro. And like, you know, some people actually go the other way and, you know, do the light deprivation thing and, you know, give their plants no light, you know, 48 hours before harvest, just complete plunge them into darkness. And people say, you know, it's a bro science thing. Some people say, check out Bruce Bugby's video and stuff like that. But have you guys noticed any hands-on results if you guys did that? Do you guys do that? No, I no, I've listened to Bruce Bugby on that topic, and he definitely agrees that more light is better than darkness. But I just run 12-12, and then last two weeks I'll put 11 hours on, lights on, and that's what I'll finish up with. Interesting, man. And what about you, Chris? You do any dark period light deprivation? I think Chris is muted, bro. Chris, I'm muted. I can't hear you. We got, we got to get Chris back. Don't worry. We're we gonna, we gonna get it sorted. But what about you, Untrained? You uh, I forgot the question. One sec. What's that? <laughs> you do any dark periods before you yeah. harvest? You know, some people like literally cut their plants into complete darkness before they harvest. Forty-eight hours. They say well, it, like boost trichome production and stuff like that. I've heard it, but then I, I watch Bugaby as well, like he said. But the other thing is uh, I'm running 13 in the night now and then 11 during the day because my dad was like, hey, I heard this helps and stuff like that. And I was like, okay. So trying that. 13, uh, 13 on. No, 13 off. Let him sleep for 13. It's yeah. funny that you say that, bro, because I do that, but I do that solely just to save some electricity bill costs and shit like that. <laughs> like, can you so guys I hear me? Like 11, 13, yeah, we can hear 11, 12, 12, you. 12, 12. You got him back, guys. Yeah. And these wireless mics, dude, if you don't pay attention to the battery. Yeah, it may just turn off. It may be like, yo, he, he's not with us anymore. But do you do any light deprivation? You do like any cutting off the lights, 48 hours darkness before harvest. Some people say boost trichome and THC and terps and all that. Just cut them down and hang them, man. Just cut them <laughs> down and hang them. Simple well enough. said, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the same thing. yeah, don't overthink it. Last night, so I mean, I will make sure that they're a little dry. Uh, here in Colorado, it's drier than hell, so I have to pump humidity into my tent. So I like to give it a day or two of rest of not watering, and then I'll take uh, the night before we're going to chop it off. I'll take all the excess uh, fan leaves, nothing with the sugar leaves, and then that's how I hang it in the tent. Because it's dry here, so I don't have to worry about it going back and forth. It gets low, humidity goes up, and it's right there. And uh, tried and true, 60-60. Uh, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. We're in the basement, so I just have to, the luxury of the temperature of the house. But it's usually cool in the basement. So I'm roughly, uh, humidity is 60, and temperature is 62, 63. Got you. And like that, you actually mentioned like, you know, just getting that perfect temperature and humidity. And I would also say, you know, before you even get to drying and curing, which is a massive part of it, just harvest your plants at the right time, right? If you don't harvest it at the right time, you can end up with something that just doesn't taste as good as it could have because you just harvested it too soon, you know? So just think about that. You guys, so when do you guys harvest? I know everyone looks for like the trichomes and 70-30 or 50-50. What sort of mix do you guys look for? uh luke maybe <laughs> yeah no i uh i go for about 50 50 but i'm not huge into trichomes i just kind of make sure i haven't gone too far but i really okay. start to watch the nug and watch it stop stack and wait because you will see it it'll stack 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 and then she just sits and ripe ripen yeah. so that's about my motto is just watch the plant itself and take a look at the trichomes make sure i didn't go too far i don't need no couch lock so yeah, and that's true, bro, because, like, you do notice that, like, you know, they just stop getting any bigger and they just sort of get, like, really dark. Like, the trichomes all turn amber and stuff. Yeah, the hairs are cur curling, yeah. Yeah, even the hairs might turn super orange and everything just looks super yeah. orange, bro. Uh, what about you, Chris? You, like, you go in there with the little microscope and go looking for trichomes and stuff? 
Yeah, um, we we shoot for the ten percent, fifteen percent amber. Uh, Monica, uh, CBN hits Monica the opposite way, so instead of sleeping, it gives her energy. So we look for uh, all the white cloudy because I prefer the energetic. Uh, there is, you know, I'll let different plants go so that I have that nighttime one, but I prefer the energetic gas. Yeah, and uh, we bought we bought a tabletop uh, microscope. So I'll pull leaves and we'll take a small bud off or something like that uh, on Instagram. Check it out. Uh, she posted. I collaborated with her, but we get in there and we look. Hell yeah, definitely go and check that out, guys. And I got like a little USB microscope for like 15, 20 bucks on Amazon, bro. And I don't even take it off of the plant. I just literally connect it to my phone and I'm there trying to like look at it on the plant. Like it, the shit's shaking like a bitch, but I'm just still trying to look at it to see what's right. going you know? Because it's got to be real stable. I think that's one of the benefits of actually just taking the flower off the plant, taking a little bud off, setting it down on a table and just looking at it properly, right? Yeah, uh, and uh, you can take sugar leaves off too because they're coming right out of that flower. Yeah. So yeah. you don't always have to look at the flower. Uh, take take it from a couple different spots. If you see your your one in amber, then cut the plant down because it's going to be off anyways. Because your top flowers are going to uh, finish first, and then if you were to cut those off, your second ones would finish ripening up. So it's going to be a little bit different when you take the whole plant. Yeah. So we're talking overall. Yeah. Interesting, bro. I like that. You like a lot of people got different like techniques down pack. What about you, Unchained? What you do? Well, I, I do all of them. Uh, it's kind of <laughs> that method again. I bought uh, the smallest little glass, and then I bought all the way up to like a two hundred dollar scope thingy, and then I made a PVC pipe thing that makes it like lean against the floor, and I can walk up to the screen and it pulls wow. the plant, and I could just sit there and check every one without having to do oh, anything. That's and, uh, See, that's that. But then I got this German made little Swiss lens or some shit. And that was cool as hell. Yeah. Like it's like this, but you, you could see like everything. I, I, I need to like bring it out sometime and show somebody you guys will love it. It's, it's eight 99, bro. It's the coolest of all of them. I've got the <laughs> gadget. I swear on everything. This little thing. I'll tell you about later. <laughs> bro, you, you, oh, it's not uh, like you'd be having too much fun with that, you know. But I got to say, bro, a, you got a ton of cool little gadgets and shit. I noticed, like, on your IG, I saw this little soy moisture sensor from EcoWit. So those I are know, awesome. Sensor, like, you play. You yeah, they sent me that. There was stuff, bro. Love <laughs> it, man. They hey, sent me that. I've got all sorts of neat stuff to dick with because I'm all about, I need that next edge shit, but I don't want like the spoon fed shit i want that shit you can't find you know i want yeah. that next level like i'm looking to elevate the game guys i'm I, i'm nothing right now compared to what i will be in 10 years that's all i'm looking for is yeah. what i can be with what i've already got to start with this was all strategic man i invested in myself i sold my bitcoins got in this shit all the way bro like i'm Look here to be the best one day yeah. this isn't just <laughs> something and i'm fucking obsessive like I won't be there anytime soon, guys. I am nowhere near there. I fucking suck right now, like in comparison <laughs> to so many people. Even people who are here have grown better than me. You I'm gotta sure. start you know, somewhere, bro. Like exactly. I actually see in the chat somewhere was like, uh, right. my first plant was grams. Like, what did you guys remember your first right. harvest? Like, what, what did you guys harvest? I'm sure it wasn't the fucking best harvest of your life, right? Exactly, but it's it, I get it too. But at the same time, if you aim for a shirt, buddy, you're gonna miss by a shirt. If you aim for a button. You're going to shoot them and you're going to hit by a button. You're going to miss by a button. You see, it's just yeah. have the goals that really, really stick out so that you can really be sniping at that specific. You get what I'm saying? God, well I said. It, I like that. Well man. said. Thank you. Thank you. I got to say, I fuck with that too, bro. And um, well, yeah, I think we'd be actually going through some real nice stuff when it comes to drying or curing and not drying, curing, getting that really nice taste and, and smell. And one thing people would say is that I got to talk about drying and curing. And yeah. what do you guys do when it comes to drying and curing? Like we mentioned, cutting the plant down to the base, hanging everything up. Um, a lot of people may be in different environments, but some people in the chat were saying 60, 60 is a myth. What do you guys shoot for to get that perfect dry and cure? 60 60 yeah i'm in a basement 60. like chris and it just it kind of just um the environment's there for itself use a de dehumidifier sometimes but 60 60 and let it ride till stem snaps so i i got 18 days on my last dry 
Ooh, until stem snaps, bro. I find that's always just too late for me, it's and it feels cool. like it's just a little too crispy out here in Colorado. I don't know. Well, I hang the whole plant. I don't cut no sugar leaves, no fan leaves. I just chop it, set it. So I definitely got a little more moisture. I'm asking for a problem. But so far, so good with the 6060 <laughs> fan blowing on the wall. I got a exhaust, so fresh air coming in and out. I like that, man. And a lot of people in the chat saying dropping that 60, 60, 60, 60. Some people saying VPD. And uh, do you guys look for VPD when you're like harvesting and all that? Or when, what do you guys do? Oh, yeah. I yeah. change it up all the way through, especially the last couple of weeks. I'll actually kind of ease up on the pedal, let them <laughs> kind of relax. But 60, 60 is best of my ability. Uh, Chris did a video saying there were other ways too. Uh, possibly debatably better ways. I don't want to quote anything because I can't quite remember it, so I just won't dive in. But yeah. uh, I like what he was saying below too as well. It's uh, the build a soil way, the Jeremy Silva way. It's it's always done me really true. And as you had said, uh, you, like Jeremy Silva states that he likes it. Like when you hear it crack, it, it just it, it's your climate. You're he's in like a, a real dry area too. I don't know if you are or are not. But uh, I like it like right before that crisp, like that crack, because then it'll be too dry, to be truthful, depending on if you're even close. And then a lot of people don't know you can actually get your tent cooler because Jeremy Silva did a video on how you can actually just leave a port open on the yeah. side of your tent, allowing your AC unit to be tricked to never quite hit 62. So it just continuously loops and gets colder and colder. Yeah, that's literally a technique I use uh, before I actually noticed him do that just because I had to figure it out, you know, growing in the hot ass Caribbean and shit like that. And, you know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. Sometimes you just figure shit out yep. and, you know, trial and error type shit. <laughs> you say yes. Caribbean? What's yeah. that? You're going in the Caribbean? No, nah, not now. I was. Now I'm in Colorado. Same place as Jeremy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy lives like uh, five hours away from us from Denver yeah, so exactly. he deals with that Colorado crumble and the dryness and all that so I figured if he knows how to do it in Colorado 60 60 then that's what I'm going to follow so I and he always tells you to control what you can control so I can't control the temperatures but I can control the humidity and I just am lucky at that 62 degree and you can hang it indefinitely if you have the right conditions because yeah. when you put it into your jars that's what you're shooting for so if you're if you have a room that's your jar if it's where it needs to be and but to take it down and everything i look for the smaller buds to snap off of the main stock i don't wait for the big branch to hear a snap because those little ones will come off first and then there's still moisture for the cure yeah well said yeah, yeah, well said, Chris. Jeremy Silva for president. Definitely. <laughs> I'm voting. <laughs> That's a great point too, Chris, because I, I think I would agree with that, man. I found that if a lot of people say, you know, do the snap test technique and all that and wait for the big ass stem to snap. But, you know, oh. sometimes you can also wait for the smaller ones because the big one may take super long. By the time you wait for that to snap, it's your flowers too dry. You got that hay. I forgot about that completely. <laughs> Yeah, I don't even look for a branch. I look, I just take a random flower and grab it. And if it snaps off of its stem, then that. that's the snap I'm looking for, not even a branch. I like that. Yeah, that's I great like advice, that. man. Definitely, definitely. And I like the whole grow room. You know, if your environment's dialed in, you know, if you got to get in a couple extra days, you can't get to chopping them and <laughs> trimming them up. You can let them sit a couple days if that environment's right. If you get up to 65, 67 degrees, I don't think there's any issues. I think if you're just not getting too hot over 70 and trying to keep that humidity between 55 and 65, I think you're going to be golden. 65 is pushing it, but I mean, I think you're going to be all right with the light uh, airflow. Guys, yeah. And if you want to okay I was ahead, say, this is not a necessity guys uh most people i know tons of people who actually they cure their weed in the same room they grow in there is nothing wrong with that at all uh it's just this is just trying to you know up your game a little bit if you can and if you want to this is not something you have to do just yeah. correct well said yeah. well said and, yeah i mean your conditions are pretty much right there and you have all the equipment already for growing so if you can afford for your tent to be down for two weeks then go ahead harvest it flip it upside down close it up and just switch your fan to a wall and you're golden perfect yeah 
And I like that Luke said that as well. You know, he has his fan facing the wall because you don't want it facing on your flowers and literally blowing the turfs off them yeah, flowers either, bro. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I always get to face it and I'll watch the episode after and be like, fuck, we didn't talk. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up. We got the then, right people going on. And then if you're uh, bringing the humidity into your tent, because I use the AC Infinity humidifier from outside the tent, make sure that none of that moisture is falling on your drying flowers. I have it off to the side where my fan down at the bottom and it falls and it go, goes against the wall and everything. You don't want extra moisture on your flowers. Same yeah. thing applies with your grow room and same thing applies with your fans. You don't point your, you don't point your fans at your flowers. You want a fan going up from the floor and then you want fans circulating the air in the room to synthesize For the sure. outside environment, such as wind, but you don't want it beating them in the fucking face. Like try yeah. to get it off of them. Try to circulate the atmosphere. <laughs> I love how this guy describes shit, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm just real with shit. You no, know? I love I'm, it, like, bro. I'm, I'm not here to fucking. I want these people to learn. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, a lot of people don't know that you don't have to have that oscillating fan doing this. So you've got your air intake. If you have a fan pointed towards where the exhaust is and you make the tunnel center like what you need to do, the yeah, cyclone. Bro then you're not even have to have that fan hitting your uh, flowers because they'll move because it'll do the vortex. You said it. Yeah. And I I've got... literally found like flowers just smell quicker, like lose their smell. If you have that fan blowing directly on it, bro, like it just makes sense, bro. And wind whip too. Your leaves will start curling sideways and your flowers yeah. will start yeah. leaning away. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Oh, my bad. No, no, I'm glad you did. So I don't have to. <laughs> yeah, he said it better. I was struggling. I was like, how am I going to approach this? <laughs> you got yeah, because it's that sideways hook, you know, the claw, but it's sideways on the leaf. If it's sitting flat, it'll be turning sideways. And it's because it's getting wet so much. And then your flowers will lean. Yeah. And I would say I'm growing in a basement too. So I think that makes like three of us all growing in a basement and Richard who says he's growing in a basement and drying and he uses a flex six inch for intake for the tent. He just adjusts the height of the intake to the exact temp that he needs. So any of you guys dry in a grow tent, like, or how do you guys do it? Cause some people also dry in a grow tent, have their carbon filter running as they normally would their normal grow. And that also accelerates the dry process too much. And that can lead to hay smell, ruin your smell and your taste. Uh, what do you guys do? You guys dry in tents and with filters? What do you guys do? Uh, yeah, I got a, uh, I got a eight by four to dry in. And the reason I got that, it was, I just had tarps hanging up before but uh, when in the winter came, I had the heater run and it suck all my humidity out. So I invested in an eight by four and it just allows me, like I said before, it, you know, I travel for work. So if I can't get to these plants this week, it's not the end of the world because I got the environment dialed in. I look at it like a giant jar. You know, I got fresh air. It's there sealed. It yeah. uh, you know, it's 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 your own little cure right there if you need to be. Yeah, I, I fuck yeah. with that, too. What about you, Chris? You dry in the tent? Yeah, I have the 2 by 4 AC Infinity tent, and I've got the carbon filter. Uh, I haven't invested in my third uh, uh, controller 69 Pro yet, so this one's running on the old one, so it's just on off, uh, to, and it it's set at 60% hum humidity, and then the AC Infinity humidifier is set at 58%, so like they that. just back and forth, back and forth, you know, and, and my uh, graph kind of looks like this, which is fine you just don't want the big dips so you're always going to have this number going on fan kicking on fan kicking off humidity going up you're going to have that wave but it's these huge drops and yeah. by the way if you're using an ac infinity humidifier make sure in the off setting it's set at zero because for one day it was running at two the whole time i walked in and it was 80 percent. luckily i just chopped the plant so it's not going to harm it i don't think but uh just a word to the wise Definitely, bro. Man, it's crazy <laughs> you say that because, like, sometimes you don't notice things going on in the grow room and that messes up all your hard work in, like, two days of not noticing something, you know? Like, fuck. <laughs> the dry tin is not the place to set it and forget it. You should be in there at least once, twice a day, making sure that all your equipment's working right and that your flowers aren't sticking together. And your main thing that you're looking for is that smell of mold, mildew, things like that. Yeah, for sure. And if it's one thing, just go in there and smell it because it smells good, bro. You just want to make sure everything is smelling damn good. I got <laughs> those, man. 
<laughs> oh Love man hell yeah but guys i think we've touched on a lot of different stuff man and I, the last thing i sort of just wanted to touch on is like you know just whether you, any of you guys do any of that crazy you know like adding extra things to your flower because like spring turps and adding like even orange peel and fruit and stuff like that to your jars after your harvest is that something any of you guys do just a crazy question i thought i'll throw out there <laughs> Nope, I set it in the jar and forget it once I get that. Nice no, no, dry, no extras, right? No extras for me. <laughs> so I'm not yeah. even I'm not a fan of the Bovita packs, really. I I just I think set it in the jar and let it go. And if you got everything dialed in during the dry, I think you're off to a good start. Yeah. So what's what's everyone's cure? How do you because we gotta touch that? We talked about drying, but if you can't if you don't cure it, you're done. I almost did not even I didn't even realize we did not actually discuss the cure, guys. So yeah, the cure, that's actually super important. For me, I look for like a minimum of I would say two months. Like I, I like a two month cure. If I can do a two month cure, I'm doing it, bro. Like hands down. And even if I can do a little bit longer, I'm doing that too. Fuck it. What about you, boys? <laughs> yeah, I think cure is definitely necessary. I'm kind of um bad about it sometimes you get that strain down you got it dried up trimmed up and you're just ready to smoke it so i'm gonna cheat sometimes and <laughs> i'll smoke it ahead of that but i do got the top shelf flower that's been sitting for a couple months i'm like you i can get a good good cure yeah bro i've cured flower like as much as long as like a year over a year bro and it's lost its colors got a little dark but it just tastes and smelled just as good you know like straight up but i have done it too soon it just doesn't taste too good but what about you, Chris? What about you? You raised the question. So let me hear you. Go, bro. I uh, use uh, grove bags. So I'll trim it up and take it off of its branches. I'll put it in the grove bags. And this right here is my uh, humid humidor. And it yeah. uh, stays at 60 degrees. And inside, I've got four or five bo bovida packs that keep it between 50, 58 and 60%. But I'll go ahead and open it. And you can see. see bro, there's it's legit AF. Yeah, so there's bovida, bovida packs in there, and uh, they say if you can uh, keep a cigar moist and everything like that, that it's same for cannabis. That is pretty dope, and I love that sticker on it, bro. Shout out, <laughs> I can't fan represented for sure, bud. And that's the man right there. Big yeah. love, bro. <laughs> Big love, bro. I appreciate that, man. And what about you, Untrained? Because I know you're, you're a guy, you're trying all different types of stuff, bro. So what do you look for when it comes to the cure? You're sticking your hands in the cookie jar? Or are you keeping it out? Or Yeah, I'm fucked, man. I've smoked a whole plant before it was ready before. I don't care sometimes. I like weed. Um, so Why do I not doubt this guy ever, bro? I just, I, the thing, I love all the different methods, all the different ways. So I let it sit for at minimum two weeks. If my scissors don't take what I need first and they make it that long, sure thing. And I, I get a lot of these plants. I just, it's like I eat the shit but basically afterwards after it's been two weeks I will I've got multiple I've got the Centurion Pro Mini and I don't use it near as much as this uh, ablaze bowl trimming machine and then uh, at the end of this month I'm giving an ablaze trimmer away by the way uh the 30 no 28th yeah so uh I got an extra one I bought a pallet that had three of them on so I gave my dad one I kept one and I'm just giving them away to the people yeah. um and so after that I put them I've got a uh, big ass black totes right and then my buddy, he's like, I think co-owner of Boost or something. He gave me these things. He gave me like a seven pound Boost pack. And I threw that in there like a brick and it just kind of, it's not, I let them, I let them cure for a while. You know, it turns out awesome. That's Man, I love my dope. shit. Like it's the, oh, and I put them in grow bags too inside of there. It's just, I'll crack the top open. So the humidity is perfect inside of there, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So pretty much the same thing, sealed environment with mm -hmm. the humidity kept. Yeah. I love it. I like and that, that right. way you don't have that humidipack or that on your flowers itself because a lot of people yeah. throw them in their jars or throw them in their bags i'm just uncomfortable with that i don't think it'll steal terps but i just don't want that uh humidity and that stuff to change that drastically yeah they got the top on here that's like yeah. specifically meant yeah for you guys tried those too i like them the sea vaults yeah I that's what i tried the sea vault i have that's what i keep my flower in yep yep i got quite a few i like them yeah, that's my smoke. That's my go-to smoking thing. So it keeps. Same. If I go to the dispensary, I'll throw my ounce in there, and I'll have a uh, the pack, and uh, it'll get them a little moister. Yeah, you know, 
Shout out Call to Vern, the problem, you know. That's the biggest problem, bro. And shout out to Vern too. He says Sativa gets me spontaneous. That's yeah, right, sir. Bro. Go do some yeah. spontaneous shit. It's my shit, man. And Golden says orange peel for forty five minutes in a Grove bag. Interesting. I I, I don't know if yeah. I've ever tried that, but nope. I've seen people do it in jars. Not the. What grove. about cryo freeze? Anybody? I don't know. I've seen someone drop a comment about freezing, but I've not done the cryo freeze. I mean, I don't know shit about it. That's why I was asking, really. Like, so, back in the day, I was moving shit. And then whenever <laughs> that started, you know, they're like, yo, we're cryo-freezing these. We got, like, 50 of them for this prize. You know, back in the, you know, allegedly. <clears throat> anyway, allegedly. Continue. You, you knew something about allegedly. it, yeah. No, I don't know. No, so, I just said someone said in the chat. He did. <laughs> I've, I've seen a machine where it's, uh, it's uh, pro, uh, some type of, uh, I think it's liquid nitrogen, and they blast it into a round trimmer. And they keep it frozen the whole time, and then they put it into the freeze dryer. And they do, you know, they uh, harvest and have on shelves in like three days. Wow! Because it's kept yeah. frozen, and it gets its humidity back once it gets to room, your room humidity or whatever it is. And they say that the terps and everything are there, but I mean that's not a home grower thing. That setup was huge, man. Yeah, and buddy. if anyone's looked into a freeze dryer, you know What's they're not up, cheap. Man? No, they are not me. It, I was just seeing something, but thank you for being here. You're helping. Yes, sir. I had no fucking idea how to word it, so I was like, I ain't even gonna try. But yeah, you got this. Yeah, I mean, it's a big barrel that they shoot that stuff in. It stays frozen. It trims it up. Yeah. Looks pretty. Put it in the freeze dryer, and then it does its thing. And then they pull it out, and it puffs up, ready for market. Wow, that is crazy. Um, Not my home grow, man. It's got to be done right. Take yeah, care of it like a child. Yeah, that's for sir. people who are like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Money. That's not, no. not me, man. That's, I mean, that, I'm for, it's the passion and sharing. Yeah, they're trying to get that shit to market fast as fuck, right? Yeah, I'm going that's fucking full on with this room. I ain't trying to grow the best fucking shit and then just torture, like, you know, lose yeah. everything. No, fucking risk it. No way, dude. Preserve. Preserve. Yeah, they, and there are some dispos out here selling some straight up booth, like crazy ass shit, bro. Like, yeah, you gotta watch it with those. Hell yeah. Well, guys, I think we got a lot of people tapped in the chat right now. You know, shout out to Organically Blunt. You know, got a great podcast, guys. Go get, go and check him out. See what he's got going on. Shout out to Vern. Vern is in the chat, too. Got Norma G. I seen a real serious argument going on in the chat between who's going to be president since uh, <laughs> the astronaut nominated Jeremy. And a lot of people <laughs> nominate Norma G for Prezi. No I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> So that's gonna be a that's gonna be a tight one, bro. <laughs> I may have to lean to a Norma G on that one, bro. I don't know. <laughs> Big that helps us with all this stuff. Norma G, right on. You rock. Thank you, Norma. Awesome. Norma yeah, thanks, G. Norma. Shout out, Norma G. I talk to that video. fucker all the time. He's such a cool dude. Chad yeah, Westport. Bro. Chad Stop. Westport in the chat, growing some weed. Chad Westport going some weed. And we got Cav Snake all the time. Chad all Westport. We need to shout them all out. We got creative too. Creative in the chat too. Shout out to Creative. Creative is going to be on the show next week or pretty soon. You guys look out for that. We're going to have another one with the Crow Bros. Most definitely, man. Well, guys, I think we touched on a lot of great things, guys. Like, you know, from everything when it comes to getting that tasty, nice, smelly, dank fucking flower, bro. Like, you know, from growing all the way up to curing and drying and using everything that you can do to, like, improve everything, bro. So, but before we close off, guys, people are asking, where can they find you guys? Drop you guys' IG and where the guys can find you. YouTube, let's start off with you, Untrained. You're right next to me on this side. Hey, May Wiggler, are you in the chat? Make sure to give me some links down there. Oh, she doesn't have a wrench, but Norma G's got me, I'm sure. You guys can find me on Instagram. Y'all can find me on uh, uh it's going to be uh, Untrained Astronaut, and then YouTube, Untrained Astronaut. TikTok is The Untrained Astronaut. Uh, Facebook, Untrained Astronaut. And uh, what else? Ooh, my Discord, which is super cool with over 200 people in there now. And it is a fun community of nothing but positivity. Don't join it and be a fuck. Be cool. Um, it's a fun <laughs> time. I love it. And uh, yeah. Oh, and we got our own clothing website thingy now that May Wiggle makes the own clothing and shit now. So the, the money goes to my like kids and shit. And then a percentage goes to the shit that I give away at the end of the month, dude. Pretty hey, dope. Yo. That's what's up, man. Shout out, guys. Definitely check him out. He got some great stuff going on. He's got a popping Instagram and YouTube, and he's doing some great stuff. Definitely check him out. And we also got another grower down here doing some great stuff. We got my homie Luke. 
What's up? What's up? up? Hey, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, a cannabis Luke. Like I said, I'm not the YouTuber. That's for these studs over here on this channel. So uh, it's been awesome shooting the shit with you guys and talking shop. It's always a good time, man. Hell yeah. We're well, growing some of that fire, bro. And, you know, I know someone else is growing some of that fire. Is this guy down here in this corner? Where is he? This <laughs> it's hard to pick. Right, right, dude. I just, I'm <laughs> learning. You can't too. miss him. Shout out Canada, Chris, bro. So it's uh, Canarado underscore Chris on Instagram, uh, Mo Grows Stuff on Instagram. Uh, and then uh, let's shout out our new YouTube. It's a Seed to Harvest pod podcast. And uh, we also have a S2H uh, podcast on Instagram also. So you can find all the boys there. And then if you want to get in touch with us directly, it's Seed to Harvest podcast at gmail.com. And we'll answer your questions. Uh, one-on-ones, whatever it is, because uh, we want everybody to grow. Make it easy. Hell yeah. And shout out to Norma G for dropping all those links in the chat, man. Like, big love for that, bro. Really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, shout out to everyone tapped in, bro. You know, and appreciate you guys hanging on. I think we might have lost Untrained right there at the end. I don't know oh, what no. happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for you guys hanging out, bro. Hey, anytime, you, bro. Bob. Yep. Matt, oh, get a hold of me. Back. We got him back, and we were like, Matt, I hit the go. wrong button. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like he hates us already, bro. We were on this too long. <laughs> oh, what? man, fuck yeah. Well, big love, guys. Thank you guys for taking the time to hang out with us, man. It was a great show, the Grow Bros show. If you guys want well, we can do this sometime again in the future, man. I love hanging out with you guys. Hey, for man, sure, man, man for sure. Let me Anytime. Know. Anytime, oh, yeah. yeah. Peace, guys. Nice meeting you. It was cool you. meeting you guys. By yeah, the way, stay yeah. lifted, my friends. Oh, yeah. You guys are awesome. Hell yeah. But wait, guys, don't forget, stay high and stay motherfucking fly, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Always be high. <laughs> Peace. Hey.